Oh my gosh, welcome back to the channel, my friends. It seems like it's been a minute since we've been on YouTube. So in the world of hacking and going on bug bounty adventures, it's almost impossible to talk about everything. But as YouTube has taught us, nothing is impossible. So grab your black hoodies and let's crash right into this iceberg called OSENT. Iceberg, mud ahead! Because nothing is fun until you get good at it. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. So ignore all of that. We're here to expose some secrets. Ice camera Before we get into some OSINT tutorials, we're going to look at how you can get a job in OSINT. And we're going to go over to OSINTJibs.com. Like the car jobs! They took your job! And what that is, is a job search for the OSINT community. So let's see what kind of companies and jobs are in OSINT. Now you can search by the country, your experience level, the job type, whether you want a full-time, part-time, remote. And you can also search by the OSINT area that you want to focus on. They took your job! They took your job! They took your job! So the most recent job was posted back on April 29th for a special investigations analyst for Coinbase. So if we click on it, it tells us a quick detail of what it's about. It's remote, doesn't give a salary description. Here's the job description. So let's go ahead and click on apply now and see what comes up. It takes us over to Coinbase. Again, here's the job title, special investigations analyst, gives a description about it, what you'll be doing, the job duties of this role, Looks like you do a lot of looking for malicious activity, write scripts to automate data extraction, create new investigative techniques, remain current in the industry, provide feedback, respond to assistance, handle highly sensitive cases, other job duties as assigned. So who are they looking for? They're looking for a well-organized self-starter who can work autonomously. Python skills are good to have, working in Excel, data analytics, passion and interest for NFTs, good awareness of digital privacy, attention to detail, minimum two years, bachelor's degree, and a working knowledge of either of these languages. So if you meet any of these qualifications and you wanna work in OSINT, here's a great job. They took your job! They took your job! If we go back, we can see some more jobs that were recently posted. Security intelligent analyst, senior digital investigator, digital investigator, fraud intelligence strategist, junior internet investigator, intelligence analyst, counterterrorism policing over in the United Kingdom, open source intelligent collection analyst, company is posted by Google. Click on apply, it takes us over to a Google application. Responsibilities. Manage open source intelligent collection projects. Understand cross-functional and cross-product partner intelligence needs, as well as some other duties. So minimum qualifications. Bachelor's degree or equivalent practical experience. Experience preparing intelligence or risk analysis reports. Experience working with third-party providers and vendors. Experience with the intelligence cycle. Preferred qualifications. Verbal and writing communications. Experience designing and executing vendor extended workforce quality control programs and metrics. Familiar with app SQL scripting. Experience assessing, analyzing, and resolving complicated issues. So really general qualifications for an analyst. Cybercrime analyst from Visa posted on the 25th. So there are a ton of jobs in here. So let's go ahead and apply to one. Bingo! They took your job! They took your job! Yeah. They took your job! 
So let's now switch focus over into a tutorial. And what we're going to use today is a project over on GitHub called G-Hunt. And what this does is you provide it a Google email address, a document, a YouTube channel, or a Google identifier. And it goes out and it asks for all this type of information. For example, the owner's name, the owner's profile picture, the, the creation date of their account, possible YouTube channel, possible other usernames, a Google Maps review. So you know how a lot of people go on Google Maps and they leave reviews of places they've been and possible physical location that Gmail account is attached to a work or a school. It's going to try and pull phone numbers and addresses. So before we get started with G Hunt, there's a few line items that we need to get set up. So we need to feed this cookie information. And to do that, we need to use our Google account to automate and do this type of hunting. And I recommend using a dedicated account as so you don't tie your actual account to this type of activity. And every time you log into your account, you're probably generating new cookies and you'll have to constantly have to update it with the new cookie information. And that's why I recommend just creating a new dedicated Gmail account for this type of OSINT. And what I did was I created this account here and let's go ahead and I'll show you really quickly how we can set this up. So when you come over to myaccount.google.com, you need to grab some cookie information. And that cookie information is listed here on the screen. So it's gonna ask you for the SID, the SSID, as well as a bunch of other cookies. So let me show you where you can find that information. So if we open up the developer tools, come over here to the network tab, click on myaccount.google.com, come over here to cookies and make sure that you show filtered out request cookies because you need those as well. So here is the SID that you need. Here is the SSID, the API SID, as well as all the other ones. If it's your first time, it'll automatically ask you to input your cookies. So we hit enter. And as you can see, that is already detected my valid cookies. But if we wanna replace them, we'll hit yes and replace them again with these generated cookies. So I'm gonna hit no. We don't wanna generate any new tokens because that is currently tied to this OSENT Google account. And we are ready to start doing some OSENT on some email addresses. So to do that, we'll type in Python 3 G Hunt. We'll type email because there are four parameters you can use to search. You can search from an available email address, a document, a Google ID, or a YouTube channel. So we'll type in email. And as an example, we'll use my Google email account, hackbot1x at gmail.com. And let's see what it finds. It found one account, the name of the account, secret letters, the email address, the Google ID, as well as activated services. It found my YouTube channel and I don't have any Google map reviews and I don't have any Google calendars. So a little bit of information tied to this, not a whole lot. Let's take another look at an email account that is not mine. Here's the name of the person that this account is attached to, the day the profile was last edited, their email account, again, their Google identifier, no hangout, two YouTube channels. So if we copy and paste it, you can see their channel pop up here. Here's one channel by Vincent. And here's another channel, potentially two different people, looks like. And then it found a Google Maps review. So by their Gmail account, we can see where this person has left some reviews or frequented. You can see that he's been to the Twisted Fork, the Punta Gorda Sailing. He's been to some restaurants, left some reviews. 
uh, left a review at Chipotle, all attached to his Google account. So the next module we can use to search by is by looking at some Google Docs. And what I mean by that is here's an example that you can find online any Google document that's public and we can search for data inside of here. So to do that, we'll just copy and paste the, the URL. And it found the document ID, when it was created, when it was last edited, the public permissions are reader. The owner of the document is Jonathan. Here's his email address. Here's his Google identifier. And he has a custom profile picture at this location here. So depending on how big the target's footprint is online, you can generate a ton of good information on that person. And what we don't want is a ton of personal information attached to our accounts because then you can see that it's quite easy to footprint somebody. And again, we can extract that information and build a profile around our target. Now, the next tool I wanna to talk about is FOCA. And this is great for OSINT as well for pulling sensitive information off of the web. Just like what Google Dorking does, FOCA does the same thing. So let me show you a quick project that I was recently doing. Now, what this does is it goes out to Google, Bing, and DuckDuckGo and asks it to bring back everything you know for these extensions that you select. Now, to be able to use this tool, you need to set up a Google API key because if you use it right out of the download, it's going to use your browser and your browser is going to rate limit you and cut off a ton of traffic. So you're not gonna get the complete picture as whereas if you set it up using Google's custom API search. So to set up a Google API key, you need to come over here to console.cloud.google.com and set up a project and then set up an API key and then link that API key over to FOCA. But that's a tutorial for a completely different day. I just wanted to show you guys that OSINT can be extremely powerful in pulling usernames, locations, IP addresses, software, a ton of data. So take a look at FOCA, take a look at G Hunt, take a look at some OSINT jobs. So have fun sharpening your OSINT skills. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and I'll see you guys out there on the hunt.